We see a lot of great photography these days of severe storms from all over the globe. And I admit, I'm fascinated by lightning and thunder and photographing these events from a safe place. While we can have severe storms anywhere in the United States, it's the Midwestern states that seem to get a lot of severe storm events. It has become pretty popular among those who call themselves storm chasers to visit these areas that seem to have the storms occurring on a regular basis. It used to be that those who were called storm chasers were doing it for scientific and research purposes, putting themselves in front of these storms to collect data and observe the storm behavior. But storm chasing has become even more popular among the general population, including photographers and filmmakers. While they all might have their own reasons for doing this, photographs, video footage, and the adrenaline rush are some of the reasons. I recently learned that my good friend and veteran wildlife photographer, Lori XL, has been chasing storms for years, and it so happens she just returned from Oklahoma doing just that. So I messaged her to find out if it was possible to chat with her about her recent trip shooting storms in the Midwest. And get this, she was conducting a storm chasing workshop. Lori happily agreed, and so today she's joining us here to tell us about storm chasing. Hey Lori, thanks for joining us and looks like you uh, have some great stories to tell us about your recent storm chasing photo workshop. Hi Charlie, I do. It's great to talk to you and I'd love to share some of the stories. Um, we had an amazing time. We had tornadoes, you know, which I consider icing on the cake and uh -huh. we had some um, amazing storm structures and all the other things that go with storm chasing that we'll talk about. Sure. Well, that sounds very cool and amazing, but you know, my first question is, is it safe? You know, Charlie, almost everything I do, people seem to ask me that and I don't really <laughs> consider myself somebody that goes out and take risks. I just think, is life safe? And with that in mind, storm chasing can be done safely, yes, if you, you know, take the right precautions and you're prepared. And we'll get into that when we uh, talk about my recent adventure. But it can be done safely, maybe with a little calculated risk. Sure, sure. Well, okay, how do you find these storms and get your timing just right? I mean, is there a specific, well, I guess this is the season right now, but when you're out there waiting, uh, how long do you have to wait? Well, those are great questions, and you nailed it on the head, Charlie. It's really important to do research, and the season is important. While nowadays, I bet you could do research and find out that there's tornadoes almost every month anymore in the U.S., but there is a season, and typically from April through July is prime tornado or severe weather season in the Midwest. So firstly, I came during prime season. Secondly, I go with experts, and that makes all the difference in the world. Uh, they know where to go, and they know how to get us there safely. Sure, sure. Okay, so you're going out there with a group, and they help you find the storms, and it's at a time when you pretty much are uh, guaranteed to see something. So what kind of equipment do you take? I mean, my first thought is I'm not going to have my heavy backpack and tripod if I've got to run and jump in the car and take off. So how do you prepare equipment-wise for making sure you get everything? Well, you're right about that, Charlie. You don't need a lot of equipment, and in fact, it can become cumbersome. And if you, know, you weren't really careful, it could be life-threatening if you're sitting there flailing around with equipment. We don't get in those situations, so it's not life-threatening. But you do need to get in and out of the van quickly, both to um, stay ahead of the storm for your own safety and also to stay ahead of the storm for the great photo opportunities. So is there a trick to shooting storms? Um, you know, how do you get all that great lightning and how do you get all those funnel clouds and that sort of thing? Any tricks to the photography part of it? You know, um, there's a few tricks that I would love to share with you. I've got some photos to illustrate them as we go along. So okay. we'll get to those in just a few minutes if yeah. you don't mind. That sounds great. In fact, why don't we go ahead and jump right over to those pictures? Sounds great. Well, since most people, when they associate storm chasing um, and photographs, they all think of tornadoes. And as I mentioned earlier, to me, a tornado is the icing on the cake. Well, we did get our icing on the cake this year, and I guess we got to eat it too, because we had three <laughs> tornadoes all in the course of about oh, man. an hour, hour and a half's time. And this was tornado number one. Uh -huh. um, with this one, I was photographing with like a Nikon D4, 
and a 24 to 120 millimeter lens. I zoomed in tight. I wanted to be able to capture the ribbon shape of the tornado and it impacting with the ground. Mm -hmm. We then jumped in to the van and started chasing some other dramatic cellular structure where we were beginning to see rotation. Mm -hmm. And within just minutes out the side of the van, we saw this next tornado popping up right before our eyes. So we raced and got in position, jumped out of the van, and captured tornado number two. And as we were watching it fall apart, from it another tornado spawned, and we were able to follow it and get a third session with tornadoes. So, you know, tornadoes are fantastic, and we were really fortunate because these were very photogenic. Wow, they're amazing. And, of course, I love severe weather. I love thunder. I love lightning. Of course, I want to be in a very safe place. But this stuff is amazing. I, I'm thinking that first tornado's coming right for me. <laughs> so I'd probably be shooting and running at the same time. But uh, well, sounds like you're at great distance. We, and, you know, we actually are at a relatively safe distance. We're at a safe distance. Um, sometimes it depends on the direction and the stability of the tornado, and I know that sounds strange. Um, they can change on a dime. But some you can watch, and they just have a path, and mm -hmm. you can stay out of that path and keep watching them safely sure. at a, at a semi-close distance. But, again, you always have to have, like, an exit strategy. What is the road network like? You know, how close is the van? Things like that. Right, right. Wow. So you mentioned totally lightning. Amazing. You know, to me, I'm I'm a severe weather junkie too, and I would be perfectly happy even if we didn't get tornadoes, if we could get lightning. Yeah. And I absolutely love lightning, and we're really fortunate this trip because we were able not only to get some great lightning, but we got it in conjunction with supercells and giant storms. So when the lightning illuminated at nighttime. I was able to capture some of that storm structure that you couldn't even see with your naked eye. Mm -hmm. And to do that, it does take a special technique. Now, I often use a device called a lightning trigger, which plugs into the camera and it senses lightning and can trip the camera quickly enough to capture the lightning. Mm -hmm. When it's dark enough, I actually go into a more manual mode and I set my camera on manual focus and put it on a bulb setting and then I actually just hold the shutter open. Sure for an extended period of time, and it's not until the lightning actually strikes that it's illuminating enough to capture something on the frame. So in the case of these uh, two shots that we're looking at, these were actually both done without the lightning trigger, mm -hmm. which I did use several times when we had more light. But both of these were done with bulb setting. Oh, wow. Wow. Absolutely stunning as well. Now, this image here, the lightning is kind of coming out low and going sideways. You don't see that very often, or do you? I don't know. Well, um, in my experience living in the Southwest for a number of years, I only saw it a few times. But mm -hmm. out in the Midwest, they have terms for the different types of lightning, and this would be called CC, or cloud to cloud, so it doesn't oh. actually reach the ground. And it happens with a lot of frequency out there. It's amazing to watch right. it crawling across the sky. Yeah, so this is after sunset then, and you're just leaving the shutter open for a long enough period to let the lightning just do its thing. and. Absolutely. This uh -huh. is probably midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning. Oh, when a severe my. Storm wow. Was, uh, wow. So this is the no sleep workshop. <laughs> well, that's right. Although we don't get <laughs> early starts, unlike my other workshops. We do get to sleep in, luckily. Right, right. And for the next image, these are the other reasons I go. It's just for the dramatic skies, the amazing lighting, mm -hmm. and the big, wide open plains. I absolutely love that kind of photography. And, you know, with the first image here, you simply just got color contrast and an incredibly dramatic sky, and it just makes a really awesome shot. Mm -hmm. The next image required a panorama, oh, and boy. in this case, it was the first time I pulled out my iPhone and photographed with it, and this is an iPhone pano of a supercell, and you can see the rotation. Yep. So another tip on photographing storms is not to get so focused on the actual cell or the, um, like the tornado itself. Look for the entire overall picture and the entire structure, because this thing, if I zoomed in just on where the part, the little wall cloud is coming out of the middle there, mm -hmm. you'd lose all this amazing structure in that shape of rotation, which gives you a lot of sense of what's happening there. Oh, yeah. And as a panorama, this is vastly more spectacular. 
Thank you. And, you know, again, with my iPhone, I'll tell you, there's several photos in here, and I'll mention each one that I did with my iPhone, and I'm just thrilled to death with having it there, the spontaneity, and some of the things you can do just mm -hmm. instantly with the different apps. Yes. But anyway, we talk about all the reasons we go out for this stormy weather, and you had kind of asked a question about are we guaranteed to get storms, and do they happen every day? And some companies actually say, they will guarantee you a storm. The company I go with is wise enough not to really guarantee that. Mm -hmm. However, the le likelihood, because we're there during prime time, is very high. You cannot predict Mother Nature. Oh, that's and right. in our case, in an 11-day period, we did not get our first supercell until late in the trip. Uh -huh. So what do you do meanwhile? Well, the next photo kind of illustrates some of the things we do when we have no storms to chase. It's amazing out in the plains. You've got these giant wide open spaces, like I mentioned before. You've got fields just full and full of, of yellow flowers or purple flowers. And the skies still cloud up, and you get beautiful, dramatic skies. Yeah, it's beautiful. So we end up spending time doing landscape photography. We visit uh, national landmarks. We went to... Uh, Monument, Colorado, which is the next photo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people can get antsy because we did spend actually four to five days of not photographing storms. We at least knew there were some on the horizon. That probably helped. But we had a really great group, and they've all been pre-warned that, hey, we'll go out and find other things to photograph. And to me, that's all part of it. Right. Storm chasing, wildlife photography, any of it. Most people only see that peak moment of action when everything's happening, but there's a lot that goes into the background of getting those shots. Exactly. And putting in the time is, is definitely one of them. So yeah. after we went through Monument Rocks and spent some time there, we just kind of perused Americana, if you will. And we went out looking for old barns like this next photo. Mm -hmm. And with these kind of opportunities, not only do they give us opportunities to photograph neat things in the Midwest, but they give us the chance to play with all kinds of different tools and plugins in Photoshop. So in this case, we were playing with some different textures, and I was teaching how we can use textures to kind of give that old, rustic look. Uh huh. In the next photo, it pretty much spoke for itself with the colorful buildings in this motel, the Lazy U Motel. I mean, that right there is why we pulled over, <laughs> just driving through a cute little town. Yeah, that's great. This image... I added the texture because I thought it added to it in the sky, but the buildings alone were very textured. And mm -hmm. all I had to do here was kind of actually tone down some of the color to give it the old feeling. They were right. so bright. But again, some of the Americana things that we do when we're waiting for storms. Yeah, it's and for very those neat. Well, thanks. But then finally, we get a storm. Uh -huh. And this was not a tornadic storm. It wasn't a supercell storm, but it was a beautiful storm. It was one of the prettiest storms and long-lasting storms I've seen of its kind. And what you've got here is we've got these grassy fields that are just beautifully lit with the light, and then you've got this really intense rainbow, which is actually a double rainbow, kind of hiding in that white curtain. Uh -huh. That white curtain is not rain. That's actually a hail shaft. And we could hear the hail rumbling in the sky as we're photographing this. Oh, my. And the clouds just moved, and that shaft kind of came and went. And, you know, it was our first storm, and we were absolutely thrilled to death. So we photographed that. We kept following it as it was moving along. And in the next frame, it shows it as it's just moving on past where we can follow because we right. had to get somewhere for the evening. But it just continues on and again big wide open spaces just make for amazing sky sight. oh yeah this is very dramatic so we did finally get our first storm and then we had a few more days of uh, dry spells so we were back to photographing landscapes and so a couple of ideas that we um, I want to share with you is you know when you're out photographing how do you emphasize big wide open spaces well, the next frame shows that via a panorama. It was a three-frame panorama that I did standing dead center in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. And it not only shows the wide open spaces, but it makes the clouds and everything, you know, the sky just seems so vast. And then, of course, we start hitting the tourist attractions. When you start getting, you know, three or four <laughs> days into a no-storm storm chase, you get desperate. So yeah. we went and found Carhenge. 
Yeah. It's a pretty fascinating place where somebody's uh, planted cars to emulate Stonehenge. But luckily right. we had a great sky. And then we started looking for detail type things like the next photo. Uh-huh. And I just immediately pulled out my iPhone and just started playing with all the different details and the apps right there on the spot. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing I like about the iPhone is I find that I can actually create an image in just minutes and it goes hand in hand with my big girl camera or my DSLR in that I have the ability to take that creativity and take it even further with my DSLR camera. Right. But getting the ideas and the actual impetus to do it in the first place, the iPhone really is amazing. And in fact, the next few shots of Americana were all done with the iPhone, processed in the iPhone, and simply um, projected here just for oh, your yeah, viewing cool. pleasure. Yeah, I do a lot of iPhone photography myself. Uh, kind of when I don't want to put a lot of effort into hauling all the gear, it's just go take pictures to create, and the iPhone's perfect, or any smartphone. They are. Well, and any device. You know, even if it's a point-and-shoot, the, the question, what's the best camera, and that's the one you have with you, I think that's that right. was Chase Jarvis. <laughs> well, yeah. you know what? It's I take pictures that I never... I make pictures, I should say, that I never would have made in the past. Exactly. Simply because Same I here. have it with me. So it's fun. You know, just the next few pictures kind of show some whimsical um, approaches to Americana. Mm-hmm. Some of them have been antiqued with the light coming through the window. I'd wait for just a slight breeze. And when it kind of blew the window, the curtain, I, I grabbed that shot. The next photo, I went more for a graphic type of look mm-hmm. where I was just getting the square shapes of the door and the window and the lines and then that simple chair that's very colorfully uh, painted. But again, we're out there to photograph storms, so that's my primary focus. And if there's a storm to be had, we're going to be out there. Right. And in the next photo, photo, it illustrates not only the storm, but including people in the photo. It's a mm-hmm. great way of adding impact, scale, and human interest to something. You know, sometimes we get too caught up in just keeping the nature and putting a fo- person in the photograph, I think, is really helpful. So um, this shot here was with a iPhone, created a pano in iPhone, mm-hmm. and included uh, one of my fellow travelers. Sure. And the same with the next photo. I mean, this was as the tornado was falling apart, so I wasn't afraid of missing some great shots, but it's really awesome to show, okay, that's how close we were to the tornado, having this fellow in the picture you know, makes all the difference. Nathan was great. He was a perfect subject to put in a bunch of photos, but he, it adds scale. Absolutely. So I think that makes a really big difference. Yes, it does. In the next photo, I think you, you'd asked, you know, what, do you, what does it take to make a great storm photo? Well, I thought this one illustrated an awesome superstructure or a supercell and great, great cloud structure. And so some of the things that it takes, one, I think having a sturdy tripod is good, and yes, Sometimes you're only out for a few minutes, but whenever possible, I would use a tripod. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think that dialing in some minus exposure compensation. I'm always watchful that I don't get blown out highlights and that I add some drama to the sky by bringing it down just a little bit. That darkness really adds impact. Oh, this is powerful. And then a final thing, I think, would be um, using an ultra-wide lens. And uh-huh. in this case, I was with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens at 16, and I even wished I could have gone wider. The sky yeah. was so great. But ultra-wide, just so that you can include the entire structure of a supercell like that. Well, at 16 millimeters, that must have been right over the top of you just about. <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, it was. <laughs> and uh, shortly after it passed over the top of us, it did actually touch down um, with a tornado about uh-huh. four miles away, which we missed, unfortunately. But we got to see the structure of the supercell, which, again, to me, in a lot of cases, is, is far more uh, beautiful than some of the tornadoes. That yeah. Just... Well, this is very powerful image. Well, thank you so much. I mentioned earlier, too, include people in the picture. And not only that, um, hire experts. We Mm -hmm. were really, really fortunate on the trip I was on, and that is that we had a fellow, Jim Reed, who is a National Geographic photographer, um, professional storm chaser, and definite expert on severe weather along with us. And he was great both photographically and telling us about weather and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I also um, had another fellow along 
who was the company I hired, Tempest Tours, and Bill Reed, who is one of the renowned storm chasers. Mm -hmm. And so I felt perfectly safe. When we had these two guys, if they said we were close enough, I felt that we were close enough. And if they said we could get closer, then great, because I knew that they had their safety, our safety in mind. So that's really important, is that you have you know professionals and experts, and that they have, like this next photo is showing radar, they have sophisticated equipment in the van. They've got maps that show us exactly where we're going real time. They've got um, software that gives us storm updates. We let It lets us know when areas are warned for tornadoes, and it lets us know, you know when things are approaching and when to get out of the way. So right. having that really sophisticated technology makes all the difference in the world. Yes, it's, that would be great. Plus, it allows you to just focus on your photography, and when somebody says, uh, the bus is leaving, get on, uh, you just take your last click and go. I'll tell you what, there's something to be said for that. Without, I mean, I did have to worry that everybody got back in the bus, but I wasn't having to worry about our safety because I knew that these guys were on top of it completely. Yeah. So, you know, that makes it a lot more enjoyable, too, and it, it maximizes our time in the field. Right, right. Very neat. Well, I just wanted to share this last photo with you, um, and that is taken with an iPhone. Mm -hmm. And it was just one of those happenstance moments when I found this wonderful old windmill and a great sky, and I had no sophisticated equipment. I just held the iPhone up, and I just happened to hit the button when lightning went off, and I, I couldn't believe it when I'd actually captured it. But so when we talk about equipment, it is great having the right tools for the job, but don't get discouraged and think you can't make great shots because you don't have all the best gear out there. Yeah. You, know, you can get some really awesome photos with your iPhone as well, or sure. a point-and-shoot camera. Well, this is an amazing stroke of luck, it seems like, to click the shutter on the ca on the phone at the time the lightning's coming down. Well, and you're absolutely right, and I'd like to take more credit than that, but in this case it truly was. <laughs> However, yeah. several of the folks actually were successful at capturing lightning with their point-and-shoots, and it was simply due to the fact it was happening so frequently that they just kept shooting and, and were able to actually capture it. So you yeah. know what? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's digital. Why not try it, you know? Well, that's pretty cool and pretty amazing that you can do that with an iPhone. So Now, you also have a couple of videos, uh, very short videos that we can take a look at. These are kind of time-lapse type videos? Um, actually, what they are, Charlie, is I just ran them as videos with my GoPro. I'm just now getting into doing some video, but I thought it would be fun to share them because it kind of gives you a sense of, you know, a still photograph is so dramatic, but this gives you a sense in real time what these two tornadoes that we uh, photographed were like. Uh -huh. So the first one, um, which is just called Tornado, the second one's Tornado 3, this first one was the very first tornado we saw. Uh -huh. And I've taken a two-minute video and lapsed it down into about 13 seconds. But you actually initially saw the funnel coming out of the sky. You saw the rope dropping down and then Suddenly, you saw the dirt kicking up from off the uh, ground as that tornado just ripped through. And within two minutes, it had come and, and torn up some ground, luckily out in the middle of nowhere. No damage was done and yeah. was gone. Well, that's so very cool. That was really fun. And then the next uh, video shows us approaching tornado number three. So we had already photographed the first two tornadoes and had jumped back in the vehicle and were racing down the road trying to get up here close enough to capture uh, tornado number three and we wow. got to right about here and pulled out and got some shots before it too fell apart you can but see how that's really. building and that's fascinating how the tornado oh, it is, is actually now building. again we're driving right towards us would we would i do that by myself no these yeah. guys knew and could already tell that things it was losing power and that it was going in a direction that it was safe to go towards it. It was heading from our left to right. So, yeah. again, it was safe, but it was pretty intense. Very cool. Well, I am now a wiser person when it comes to storm chasing, and I think I might just uh, have to go try that one of these days. I highly recommend it. It's yeah. definitely an adrenaline rush. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, very cool. Thank you so much for sharing that. So now, let me uh, tell our viewers a little bit more about you. Um, you offer workshops in a number of locations, and you've got uh, wildlife in Alaska, uh, Florida, Cuba, 
and I imagine the Oregon coast is what's taking place there. You want to tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your workshops? Sure, I'd love to, Charlie. Thanks. Um, I specialize mostly in wildlife, but you mentioned Cuba. That's kind of um, an exotic, unusual location. But basically, I specialize in small groups and take people to locations that have very unique and unusual subjects. So Alaska, we go to photograph um, primarily coastal brown bears, grizzly bears, but whatever other subjects we find as well. The Oregon coast, I love to do in the winter, trying to capture the dramatic waves. Um, I love to go to Cuba because the people, the cars, and the architecture are just phenomenal. It's like life stood still back in the 50s. And Florida is a great place to go to photograph birds. It's, it's, there's a plethora of subjects, and they're very habituated. So you have great photo ops. And I just can't go a year without storm chasing. So that's on the <laughs> itinerary for 2015 as well. Great, great. Well, there's uh, some opportunities for our readers to hit the road with you and go to some amazing places. And then also, uh, I'm going to mention very quickly your books. You've got uh, two books out now. Is that right? I do, yes. And actually, the first book on composition has just come out as a second edition, and I'm really thrilled with the way it turned out. So it just hit the bookshelves oh, a couple weeks ago. Great. So composition version two is out, and the other one is on wildlife photography, uh -huh. and they're both available at Amazon. Okay. Well, I'll tell our readers we're going to have the links to those in the description or the blog post for this uh, video discussion with you, so they can click on them and go right to Amazon and get them. So, Great. Well, very cool, Lori. Thank you so much. I'm glad I got in touch when I heard you were out there storm chasing because you've certainly enlightened us with some uh, fascinating uh, information as well as some uh, good advice for those of us uh, who might be interested in doing a little storm chasing photography. Well, thanks, Charlie. It's been great talking to you. I appreciate you getting a hold of me. All right. Well, you're off to Alaska here shortly, so have another great adventure. Will do. Maybe we'll talk about that when I get back. Sounds great. All right. Take okay. care. You too, Charlie.